I was exploring the CTF all day rooms. One of them caught my attention. It was called Born to Root. It caught my attention because I once had a group of bug bounty hunters and we called our um, virtual group Born to Root. So I thought, why not give it a try? And as it turned out, I enjoyed playing the CTF. Let's get started. So this is the host name. We can start right away with some port scanning. I already created a folder born to root and let's start with the top 10 ports. Why not? We want things to get real quick. So we're just going to activate the verbose mode option and let's spin it up. And oh boy, was that quick. We have ports 22 and 80. Let's start with those ports and if needed, we can expand our port scanning to other ports. So CTF 15, we land on this web page, SecretSec, a security company. It's a company based in France who is installed into plenty country around the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, our jobs. Secure operating system. There are no penetration. Oh, yeah, we have computer penetration testing. Okay, what about us, Martin, Hattie, and Jimmy? And if we want to contact them, then we can go through Martin. Perfect. So that's a web page that slightly resembles to the default Apache page. Let's go to robots.txt and see what we can find. If there is any file, you we have a file. Um, let's copy that. Seems like like it's a WordPress blog and you just got trolled <laughs> okay the troll could have been more subtle if we had a real blog here that has nothing but maybe some plugins that are not vulnerable that would uh, you know waste some time of the player but in this case it's obvious that this is not the way to go the second one was files. So that's the directory. Oh, we have some directory listing, but uh, there is nothing there. Okay. Uh, with that said, uh, let's uh, roll our sleeves and perform some light uh, directory brute force. So let's uh, do that using wfuzz. We want a word list that is placed into the seclists project. And uh, we want the discovery web content. And uh, why don't we use like raft uh, small directories.txt? And uh, we want to add in our host name. And let's hit enter. Okay, uh, I need to specify the fuzz word. This is the placeholder where the brute force happens. In this case, anything under the root directory. Oop, we have a lot of output. That's because we need to uh, filter out the code that is equal to 404, meaning not found. This is the code that we want to filter out. And as you can see, all the responses that return 404, meaning not found, will be filtered out. We're left with some folders we already have seen the files folder, but we have some standard Apache 2 uh, folders here. So we have the manual. It returns the default Apache 2.4 uh, website or web page. There's nothing normally interesting here. If you have breached a target during your penetration tests using a standard feature available on under manual then let me know in the comments below but i'm not sure if this is the way to go either mm, let's see if we have a, any other folders oh we have service status but this returns 403 meaning forbidden and with experience you get to learn those uh, remember those uh, codes by heart Let's uh, go to that icons folder. And generally this includes the icons used in the default page. Um, you know, things that ship with Apache uh, right away, out of the box. 
but I can't help but notice that we have a random file name here, a file.txt. Ooh, what the hell? Who puts a private key in the public folder? I guess that's uh, a great example that security by obscurity is not the way to go. Hey, sysadmins and developers, if you're watching this, never adopt this principle. It's flawed by design. So we're going to let this run. And while it's running, oh, it says just finished. I'm going to put it into key.rsa. And let's paste in our key, change mod. 400 key.rsa. Now I'm tempted to use that as an SSH key, but uh, I need to know the uh, username. Well, maybe we can do some enumeration based on this page. About Us contains three users. We could like try with Martin, Hattie, and Jimmy. So let's put them into a file. So we want Martin. We want Hattie and we want Jimmy. Perfect. Um, why don't we like try those? Uh, so SSH Martin at CTF 15. And we want to specify our key.rsa. Of course, I already used a key in the same host. So we are going to remove that, retry. Yes, accept the fingerprint. Continue. Oh, what? We got access. I think so. Well, it looks to me like it has succeeded, but we have a secret password here. Ready to access the secret lab? Hmm. What's the secret password? I don't know. Maybe input something random. Welcome. What the hell? Am I connected? Yes. I'm connected as Martin. Cool. Well, this was easy. I wonder how this worked. I mean, I've never been so lucky. Because this triggers right after the authentication, then I suspect that there's something in bash RC. So tail to list the end of the file. And generally, we have only this content. But now we have another line here, var temp login.py seems like this is a Python script. Okay. It's owned by Martin, our current user, and it's only readable and executable. Okay. Well, we can change its permissions for temp login. And let's go inside and see what is the logic behind that prompt. So it's importing the operating system OS module, ready to access the ready to access the secret lab. Password raw input meaning it accepts user input, and then it's uh, doing a comparison of the password between secret sec or secret lab. But this is uh, clearly flawed. I hope you spot the flaw here. So pause the video and try to analyze why this is flawed. Okay, so to give you a hint, I'm going to exit from that file, enter into a Python prompt, and let's do something like um, if one equals two or three, print yes. What, in your opinion, should be printed? Should we have a yes or nothing? Well, if I hit enter, I get indeed yes, because this returns true. We know that one is different from two and two is different from three, but this evaluation like this is flawed. So um, just to show you guys how we could patch that var temp login, what I can do here is say if password in and then I can specify here a list of passwords or keys. Doesn't make sense though, but you know, just to make it work as intended. So we can use either a secret sec or secret lab and we could still authenticate. 
So let's uh, retry now if I exit and retry with an SSH. Now, if I put something random, I get get out, bouge toi. And then if I try now with uh, secret lab, I get in, perfect. So this is still flawed. I mean, we could still bypass this even though we don't know the password. And let me know in the comments below how you would achieve that. I'd be happy to give you some hints if you need some. So just drop me comments below. For now, we're going to leave it there. And uh, in the next video, we're going to move forward and try to escalate our privileges. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that ring bell. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. It helps me a lot. See you in the next video. As always, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.